All right, let's go back to the University of Florida. Um, a basketball and baseball guy in high school, but please tell the story of how you end up being the uh, the manager for the for the baseball team at the University of Florida. Uh, yeah, so um, you know, I was like a lot of high school basketball players that that want to play in college. I, I had dreams to to play college basketball, and and was you know really working towards that goal, probably from seriously probably from seventh grade on and and just had a had a dream and a, and a goal to want to be a good basketball player and want really a, a passion to, to play in college and um as my senior year you know I was, I, as I was in my senior year and senior season and going through that um you know I was a division three level player and, and was being recruited uh, by a few schools at that level um and, you know, as my senior year kind of uh, wrapped up, you know, I had this I had this this really dumb, immature uh, mindset that if I didn't play Division One, like it really wasn't worth uh, playing college basketball, which was, you know, again, it was immature and and and, uh, you know, not not, you know, I should have played Division three. I would have loved it, I, I think. But um uh, so, so then I had a, and I, you know, then my, my pursuit at that point was to look into going to do a, doing a post-grad year, um, at a prep school, like a Fork Union or Hargrave or a Northeast prep school. And so, um, you know, my dad was helping me just research that and, um, you know, reach out to coaches. And, uh, we actually went on a, a bunch of different visits at different post-grad, places. And, and again, my, my, I hadn't given up the dream of, of, you know, trying to play division one basketball. And, and I, I wanted to give myself another year to grow and develop. And I was certainly a late bloomer from a, from a physical standpoint, I grew a couple inches in college and I was small and skinny and trying to put on weight and, um, you know, thought maybe another year of, of, uh, development, you know, and maybe I could, um, you know, get myself to that level. Um, and so we had, we had looked into that and we had actually, uh, settled on, uh, a school in, in Connecticut called Cheshire Academy. And, um, and so we were thinking that's what, that, that's what I, I was going to do. And that's what we were going to do. And it was a substantial financial, uh, commitment because it wasn't going to be a full scholarship. Um, and so, uh, as we were, you know, in the spring of my senior year, I was, I, I had decided to do that. And then I got a call from the coach at Cheshire Academy and he was just letting me know that, that, Hey, we want to let you know that, that we're, we're bringing in um, a really good point guard. I played the point guard position and, you know, just wanted, you know, you to let you know that, that, you know, it's, as we talked, we didn't, when I had gone up there, they didn't really have a point guard. So it was a situation where I was going to be able to play a lot and, and have a chance to hopefully be recruited. And, um, and so when I got that call, it just really made me evaluate uh, the, the financial commitment, you know, the money that we were going to be spending to go up there for one year. Hey, what if I go up there and I don't play? And then, you know, it's just a, almost like a wasted year. And so all those things were going through my mind and my parents were trying to help me with that. And so then as that was going on, we had a family friend that had um, basically, uh, 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 you know, put this offer out there uh, from uh, from her father, who was in charge of equipment at the University of Florida, that I could have an athletic scholarship uh, to be a manager at the University of Florida. And um, I also would be able to qualify for an academic scholarship at the University of Florida because I was I grew up in Florida and um, had the, uh, you know, the I think it was called Bright Futures at the time, you know, the, so 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 basically I could go to school at Florida for free. And um, so that's how I ended up going there. You know, it was a combination of the phone call from the coach at Cheshire and this offer to be able to go to Florida and what a great opportunity it would be to, you know, go to a great school and be on scholarship and also be involved in athletics. And um, so, and, and, and they had also told me, cause, cause I knew I wanted to coach college or I knew I wanted to coach basketball. I didn't know what level, but I wanted to coach basketball. I just loved the game. And, and so um, 
it, it was also as I was going down there to, to really be like a spring sports manager. When, and that might first year might be track, might be baseball. It was kind of wherever they needed you to go, um, might be softball. Um, and I didn't necessarily know uh, where I was going to spend most of my time with what sport. Uh, it ended up really being track as my freshman year and then beginning to do more with baseball. And then from that point forward, really got involved with the baseball program. And I had played high school baseball and enjoyed baseball. A lot of my friends were really good baseball players, uh, were playing college baseball. Uh, so I really kind of began ingrained in, in that program and really enjoyed being a part of it. But at the same time, I, I had always hoped that I would have an opportunity to go over to be a manager for the basketball team and, and be able to learn uh, from, from the coaches at Florida and be a part of, uh, you know, try to kind of get my coaching career started at, on, at, the, at basketball um, and thought that that would maybe I'd have an opportunity to do that at some point. And I uh, really didn't have an opportunity to move to basketball until like my, I think it was my last year. And, um, and they're, they're, they had a position available where I could have, could have gone to basketball. And I had just become such a part of the baseball program. And like all my, my roommates were all on the baseball team. They were all finishing up. You know, I, I kind of felt a part of it. Uh, and so I chose to just stay, stay with baseball. Um, and, and it was a great experience and I learned a lot. Um, but, uh, that, that's, that's, uh, that's the background of how I ended up at Florida and then how I was involved in the baseball program, which, which turned out to be a wonderful blessing. And, um, again, I, I learned a great deal from Andy Lopez and his coaching staff and, and being around really good players and my roommates, a lot of them, uh, you know, several guys that played in the big leagues for a long time and, just being around uh, competitive people. And, you know, that, that I think really helped me grow as a eventually becoming a coach. Certainly not apples to apples with, with college basketball and college baseball, but just being around uh, Andy Lopez there for those years, is there any leadership uh, components or what, what was sort of your big takeaway, even at that young age that maybe something, you know, two decades later, you're still able to apply. Well, I think certainly just the organization of a practice and, um, you know, how you how you organize uh, uh, a program and, and, you know, me just knowing what our players were doing every day in terms of, uh, you know, lifting, conditioning, practice, um, those type of things and kind of the rhythm of a, of a college athlete's day. Again, again, it, it, like you said, it, it's a different sport. But and the thing with Coach Lopez also is um, he 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 was he wasn't real into like the technical uh, like, you know, technical uh, skills of like, hey, here's how you throw and here's how you hit. And like for him, it all came down to like how tough you were mm -hmm. and how competitive you are. And it's like if you're you know, if you can't throw uh, strikes down in the zone, it wasn't because you know, like something you're doing physically, it was just like, you're just flat out not tough enough to get the job done. Um, so I think like for that competitive, uh, that, I mean, everything was about being competitive. Everything was about being tough. Everything was about your mindset um, versus, uh, you know, certainly some of the technical things that obviously are important. We all know that, but, and, and that was being addressed in his program as well, but more from his assistance. And with him, it was like, um, Hey, like you focus your mind that you're going to get something done and then you don't let anything stand in your way to accomplish it. And, uh, and that's what everything was about um, everything. And uh, so I, I learned a lot, you know, just from him, from that standpoint and, uh, the intensity that he brought uh, to the field, um, the, the, you know, what he demanded in terms of, um, you know, accountability from players and, and um, you know, just that intensity and that competitive fire that he brought to the field every day and I think rubbed off on our good players. Once you graduated, you started coaching there at uh, Robert F. Monroe High School, a little year in the JV, a year on the varsity, 23, 24 years old. Did, did you have any idea what you were doing at that point? 
Was yeah, I, cer- I certainly thought I did. <laughs> I certainly thought I did. You know, I was young and kind of thought maybe I knew everything and we could get in there and outwork and out coach people. And, um, and, and we worked really hard. It was a lot of fun. I was with a group of young coaches that young guys that I had kind of known growing up in high school. We had, um, you know, Scott Cleese was the head basketball coach and head football coach. And he was, he was like, uh, when I was in sixth grade in high school, he was like the, the high school quarterback and point guard and played football at Liberty and like all county in in both of those sports and was a great baseball player. I mean, he was like, you know, the kid that, you know, he was like the guy every kid kind of tried to be like. Um, so I was working under him. Um, uh, his, his brother was on the staff. A uh, guy named Kevin Ricks, who, who was a little bit older than me, but had come up uh, p- playing baseball um, at, at Florida High, which is where I ended up graduating. So we had this group of young coaches that, that were all like excited about coaching, excited about uh, working with kids. We we're all kind of, uh, you know, getting our, our, our coaching career started. And uh, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun for those two years. Um, I didn't really know what I was getting into. Uh, I was just trying to, to, to work at it really hard and, um, you know, had had, uh, you know, really like re- relying on the, the things that, that my high school coach used to do and things that I, I had learned from uh, going to basketball camp at, at Lipscomb basketball camp with, with Don Meyer and going back to the notes and things that I'd learned from him, watching videos of Dean Smith and Don Meyer clinics and Bob Knight clinics and and just trying to implement all those things with like ninth graders, <laughs> you know, it was, uh, I didn't know what I was doing, but it was a lot of fun. And in fact, like, um, I was just at my, my daughter's a sophomore and, and she had her volleyball parent meeting, uh, this week and her coach is right out of college and she's got all the energy in the world and she's fired up and her, and her assistant is the same. They're both right out of college. And, um, and so it just reminded me of those days. I told my wife, you know, it reminds me of, uh, you know, just their enthusiasm, uh, you know, the, the kind of, you don't know what you don't know. Um, but, 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 you know, you got to go figure it out and, and that enthusiasm and that work ethic and, and those things will get you through. And, uh, but, but anyway, so it was a great two years. We didn't win a lot of games. Um, we are, our, 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 I don't know what our, our, my JV and my varsity record was, but it was far from being 500 on the, on the net, on the downside. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. I was the, the, my, my second year, I was the head coach at a basketball team and, uh, Kevin Ricks was my assistant, um, my varsity assistant. And then um, on the base and then when baseball season started, he was the head baseball coach and I was his assistant baseball coach. So uh, we kind of did everything. We all helped each other. And, and it was a it was a lot of fun. Did you teach during this time or was this a, just an extra? What, what, what did you teach? Yeah. So my first year, I was like one of those floating subs. So they didn't have a teaching position. And I went to Robert F. Monroe again, like I, I, I had a, I, I hoped I would maybe have a chance to coach in college, but I had no, I had no college connections, right? I hadn't played in college. All I, the only connections I had in college, well, I had worked University of Florida's camp, you know, for a couple summers. I worked all the camps I could, Florida State's camp. Uh, I would go up and work Tennessee Tech's camp, which that'll lead to kind of some of my other jobs. But Tennessee Tech's camp, my little brother played college football at Tennessee Tech. He was a quarterback up there. So, you know, in the summers, I would go work their camp. Jeff Lebo was the head coach. So I was trying to, like, build a little bit of a network. Uh, but, but, you know, just in my mind, it was like, hey, I, I got an opportunity to coach in high school. Um um, you know, we'll see if it ever leads to college, but, um, you know, I could be a high school coach for my whole career. And I, I, I thought that might be the path. And so I was preparing to be able to teach. I majored in history and secondary education. So I would be able to, uh, you know, teach and coach. Um, and I went to Robert F. Monroe. I had a couple different places where I could have gone to start coaching high school and um, be like an assistant or a JV coach. And I ended up going there because I knew Scott Cleese and he had told me, he said, Tim, if you come here, like 
I'm right now I'm the head basketball and football coach, and I really just want to coach football. And if you can be my assistant for a year and get your feet wet and uh, meet all the people here and they're going to trust you. And after a year, he's like, I want to just move to football and you'll be able to get the varsity job uh, your second year. So that's why I ended up going to Monroe and they didn't have a teaching position, but they had this um, substitute deal where ever, I would just show up every day and they would tell me, hey, you're going to go uh, do kindergarten. It might be. And it was well, it was K through 12. So it might be kindergarten uh, PE or it might be, you know, senior science. Um, it was, So I was just a sub for the whole, you know, the whole year. And then the second year they had a position open up and I taught fifth grade. I taught um, fifth grade science and social studies uh, my second year. And then I was the varsity head coach uh, and the JV uh, uh, baseball coach. How are you as a science teacher? You know, I just had the lesson plans. And, <laughs> uh, not probably not very good, but but I could read the book and I could get the kids uh, started and, and, and teach them what was in that book. And fifth grade to me, it was a great it was a great age because it was like that age where like, you don't have, you didn't have to do everything for them. Like they, they could get going on the assignments and they could, you know, figure things out a little bit, but they also still kind of wanted to impress the teacher at that time. So uh, there weren't a lot of discipline issues. Um, so I, I really enjoyed it. And um, it, it, it was, it was a good year. Then Pensacola junior college uh, opens up in, in 2002. Um, your first dipping your toe into the college level there. How did, how did that, uh, how did that opening yeah. happen and you get drawn to it? So just like, like every year I would just email all these college coaches, you know, and I would go to clinics and I would work camp to try to meet some people and build a resume. And, and I would just email college coaches at every level about um, being a graduate assistant or, you know, an administrative spot or, you know, the, a, a low spot on the staff to try to work your way up. And um, I had gone to Pensacola coaches clinic where Paul Swanson, who was the head coach at, at Pensacola junior college at the time, he was, he was running this clinic in Pensacola beach where he, he had some really good coaches come in, you know, Pensacola beach was a, was a attractive place uh, as a high school coach to go and go to a clinic and, and, you know, stay a weekend, uh, on the beach and then hear some, um, you know, good coaches talk about basketball, but it was also an attractive place for college coaches or professional coaches that coach Swanson was trying to get to come down. So, you know, he could kind of use the beach to entice those guys to come and speak at the clinic. He also had good players on his team. So college coaches wanted to come speak at his clinic. Uh, and so I, I went to his coach's clinic one year and then I, I would also go to Tallahassee Community College. Uh, I would go to some of their games, you know, in Tallahassee. They had a great program. I knew the Panhandle Conference growing up in Tallahassee and had had seen and, and gone to games and knew knew how, uh, you know, how many good players had come out of that league to go all over Division One. So I was familiar with that league and I had I had somewhat gotten to know Coach Swanson, not great, but just from going to that clinic and listen to him talk. I thought I was impressed with him. I was impressed with his program. I was impressed with all the things that he was doing with the program, you know, had that clinic going and all and those type of things. And I had just tried to keep in touch with him. And so he was one of the few guys that emailed me back uh, or, 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 or um, you know, sent a letter back. Uh, responded to my, my, you know, letters and emails, you know, email was kind of just getting going at that time. And um, he, he was one of the few that responded that said, Hey, yeah, you know, we got a position available. It doesn't pay anything, uh, <laughs> but we can provide you, you know, a great level of experience. And it was really uh, Jeff, the exact opportunity that I was looking for. Uh, because Coach Swanson had a resume that I could look at where he had been all over Division One, You know, he had been an assistant coach at um, Northern Iowa, at Detroit, at Northwestern in the Big Ten. He had been at Northwestern with on two different stints at Northwestern with Bill Foster and then uh, back with Ricky Birdsong. Um, so he had like this, this resume of, of uh, being a successful coach, and, and that's what I was trying to become. And, and, and had a dream 
to, to try to, you know, get into college coaching. And I, I had just had, I grew up just with a, you know, a real passion about college basketball, you know, just watching it and listening to Dick Vitale and, um, and watching the ACC and, and ba- just watching basketball and growing up watching basketball. And, uh, I had a passion to try to be a part of that in college. And, um, and coach Swanson had done that and he was doing that and he was actively running a great program at Pensacola junior college. So it was a great opportunity for me to, to come in. And, and again, you know, I was a, a, a volunteer and, and really just, uh, you know, name and pay only. I mean, he had me doing so many things. I mean, I, I, I did a lot of things on the operation side, um, and, and, and then was able also able to coach and be on the floor and scout and recruit and learn how to do all those things. And, and he was a mentor for me that, that taught me how to do all that stuff. And then get, get, just gave me opportunities to do a lot of different things and, um, you know, pointed me in the right direction. And Terrence Harris was our assistant and, you know, we were in there trying to figure it out together. And, um, and, and coach Swanson was a guy again, that had just been in the business for, I don't know at that time, whether it was 20, 25, 30 years. I mean, he had been in the business. He had seen a lot of things and, and he was able to really mentor us and guide us. So it was a, it was an awesome opportunity. Again, it was no pay, but what he did help me, um, was, was he, he found me a, a teaching job teaching at the adult high school on campus there, which was like, a you know, an opportunity for adults 16. And if you have to be 16 or over to come to come and get their degree. So it might've been, you know, there were some people that might've been 30 or 40 that were, uh, you know, coming back to get their, their high school diploma. And so I taught a, a world history class. It was two hours a day, uh, five days a week. And, um, I got paid $500 a month to teach that class. And then, I had just gotten married. So my wife and I uh, had gotten married um, and then we had decided that I was going to take this job. She was going to get a a job that actually paid and we were going to make a two year commitment to see if I would just to see where college coaching could take us. And um, again, we just got a little 700, 500, uh, 700 square foot apartment. And, um, you know, I, waited tables on at this barbecue restaurant on the weekends and um she worked at state farm uh and uh you know we just kind of made enough to make ends meet for and it was two years it was like hey we're going to do this for two years and then after at the end of two years um i'll either go back to coaching high school which i loved i already knew i enjoyed that and i'll be a better high school coach i'll be more experienced or maybe God will open up some doors for me, us to pursue this thing at the college level. And, uh, you know, that's what we did. And it, it was, it was a great experience for me. And, and, you know, coach Swanson and his wife, Terry, um, were just wonderful people to, to be around for two years and learn from both me and my wife learning, uh, from Terry, how to be a coach's wife. So it was, it was, a uh, one, another, another experience where we didn't know what we were getting into. Um, but we were, we were enjoying the process. To your point about having no college connections and, and you're going to camps and, and you're just introducing yourself and you're writing letters and emails and so on. I mean, is there a, I don't know that there's a, there's a magic bullet because everybody would do it, but for someone with no connection, I mean, these coaches that are there to speak or, you know, they're in their office reading email. I mean, they're, they're constantly being just inundated with people and especially you know, here's my resume here, you know, memorize my face, whatever. How do you win at that game? Yeah. Again, I don't think there's any, uh, there's any perfect recipe for that. And a lot of people ask you that. And I don't think there's any perfect recipe. I just think it's, you know, attack every opportunity, the, the, the best way that you know how, and try to learn from people, Um, you know, try to meet as many people as you can. And, you know, when you have a chance to get a job, whether that's that, you know, the uh, manager for the baseball team or, um, you know, the JV coach at a little private school in, 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 in the country or, or uh, you know, a manager of the whatever that job is that you just do it to the best of your ability. And um, and, and those people that you're working with and around uh, are going to if they're good people, they're going to try to help you. Uh, get the next job. And, um, 
you know, I, I don't think there's any perfect way to do it. You know, we, 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 we create an opportunity here at Gardner Webb, like, uh, was created for me at Pensacola junior college where, um, you know, we don't have, uh, we don't have paid graduate assistant positions here at Gardner Webb, but, you know, we've basically when we get emails about being a GA, um, or, you know, a volunteer coach or something like that, we respond to them and, and, and explain to them, Hey, here's what we have. We have a volunteer position and you're not, you're, you're going to have to figure out a way to live. And I can't, you know, it's not, that's not easy. There's no easy answer to that. You know, for me, it was, I had just gotten married and my, my wife was able to support us. Basically we've had a couple GAs that that's how they've done it. Um, and it's, you know, there's others that their family can help them. There's others that, you know, they take out a loan. Um, but there's no easy answer to that. But I think if you don't have any connections in college basketball, you have to be willing to go and work for free. And, you know, for somebody that does have some connections, um, and somebody that, um, and, 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 and put yourself in a, in a, in a circle and in a place that you're going to be able to build, uh, connections in, in, in college basketball. So whether that's coaching a, for a great AAU program, uh, a really good high school program for a coach that, that knows a lot of college coaches and you're going to have college coaches that recruit your players it might be junior college. Like it was for me, it might be a, a GA spot at a, at a division two or a division one. Like, I just think you have to be willing to sacrifice a couple years financially. And that, that's the only way that I know. Um, and, and we've seen a lot of guys come through our program that are now, you know, paid assistants at, uh, division two schools or junior colleges or working their way into division one, Christian Turner, uh, from our staff, just got a full-time assistant job at North Greenville college. Um, you, you, you know, so, so we've seen that happen here, but it's not easy. It's not easy. It's a, it's a hard deal. There's a lot of good people that, that, that want to do this. Uh, cause it's a great job. Um, but, but it's, it's hard to, to, to move up and, and to, you know, be able to support yourself and get to a, and then you, you can do that. You can get to a level where, you know, you're supporting yourself, you know, but then, you know, get into it now, now a level where you can, you know, comfortably provide for you and your family. Um, that's the next step. And, and that's hard. That's hard. Uh, so there's no easy recipe. I just think you got to do a great job everywhere you are. You got to treat people the right way. Um, and, um, you know, find a way to, 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 um, bring value, uh, wherever you are, uh, wherever you're working and, and you do got to work at, at networking and put yourselves in positions to meet people, whether that's clinics, it's harder now because, you know, college coaches, um, and high school coaches, it's not as easy for them to work camp. Uh, so it's a little bit different. But, um, you know, you got to figure out a situation uh, that can can help you build those connections. And and then you got to get in there and, and work really hard at it. Well, after that two year, I guess, uh, experiment with your with your bride at Pensacola, uh, the door cracks at Gardner Webb as an assistant. How, how did you get in there? Yeah. So that's a, that's a, you know, I, I'm kind of long winded. So I'm giving you a lot of these details. No, you're great. You're doing great. They bore people, but that's another, I was, you know, I was told my staff this, uh, you know, this story the other day and they're like, really, you never told us that. I, I, that's crazy how that happened. So, you know, I had begun working uh, Tennessee Tech's camps, right. I told you that because basically my brother was uh, a, a quarterback at Tennessee Tech and Jeff Lebo played at North Carolina and I, I grew up like watching North Carolina really when he started playing and, um, and, or when he was playing at North Carolina, that's when I started really watching college basketball. And, and so I knew that name and was excited by the North Carolina connection. And Hey, Jeff Lebo was coach, the head basketball coach at Tennessee tech where my brother happens to be playing um, college football so maybe he can help me get on their staff as a camp worker. And so I was doing that when I was in high school. So I got, or, or when I was a high school coach, excuse me. So I got to know Jeff Lebo and his staff, John Searby, John Shulman, uh, some of the guys working for coach Lebo. 
by working camp. And so then I, then I got the job at Pensacola junior college. So now like, now like all the different college coaches that I kind of knew a little bit, like now they like wanted to know me better right? because, you know, I'm, I can help them in terms of their recruiting. Like we got good players at Pensacola. We know the players in uh, at Okaloosa Walton and Tallahassee Community College and Chipola and, you know, Florida Juco around the country. So, you know, like now John Schulman was like, you know, calling me and asking me about players. And so our relationship continued to grow um, during that time. And I continued to work their camp and, you know, uh, and other camps. Uh, Eastern Invitational was a camp I, I would go work that which was kind of like a, a, a five star, uh, which was a huge camp at the time. And it wasn't the same as five star, but it's very similar where a lot of really good high school coaches in the Northeast. Uh, and at that time, college coaches worked at camp, too. So I, I had met guys from really all over the country at my time in Pensacola, uh, assistant coaches, mainly uh, in Division One and Division Two. So. Um, as my two years is going is 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 uh, I'm, I'm in the spring of my second year and it's like hey I got to try to find a job. Coach Swanson's helping me. He's calling everybody he knows. He's telling me like he's telling. I mean I hear him on the phone with with these coaches and he's like building me up like I'm going to change their program or something. And and you know just just be doing what a loyal head coach does. He taught me a lot about that because I heard him talking with guys. And so now I feel like, Hey, I got to do that with my staff and hopefully I'm doing a good job of that. Uh, but um, so at the end of that, the spring, um, Jeff Lebo um, had left Tennessee tech and he was at Chattanooga. And so um, he now gets the job at Auburn and I don't know coach Lebo very well. Uh, but he gets the job. He goes from Chattanooga to Auburn. And Coach Shulman is pretty confident that he's going to get the Chattanooga job. John Sir Shulman, who's now the head coach at, at um, Alabama Huntsville. And um, he's pretty he's, he feels like he's going to be able to get that job at Chattanooga. Well, John Serby, who was Coach Lebo's director of basketball ops, and, and he was like this really smart guy, went on to be an associate AD at Burley. Um, he's a CEO here in Charlotte now. He's just been like really successful, like got a business mind. Um, I mean, really a smart guy, way smarter than me uh, and, and just great at relationship building and stri strategic planning and, and those type of things. And so he's going with, he had actually wasn't with coach Lebo at the time he was at another school coaching, but he was going to go to Auburn with coach Lebo as his director of basketball operations and kind of like his chief of staff in, in helping coach Lebo organize the program. And so John Searby had called me and said, Hey, I'm going with coach Lebo. How would you like to come to Auburn and be the video coordinator? And I was like, man, I'd love to be the video coordinator. You know, and so he's kind of telling me, Hey, I think you'll have a chance to, to be a video coordinator at Auburn. Um, you know, Coach Lebo's not thinking about that position right now, but when it, you know, I, I think, you know, that could work out for you. Well, Coach Shulman had also called me and said, hey, how would you like to be my director of basketball operations um, at tennis at uh, Chattanooga? I'm like, man, that'd be unbelievable. I'd, I'd love that. So it was like there was a guy on Coach Lebo's staff and he played for Coach Lebo. Great guy. I knew, got to know him well. And he was either going to be, he had been offered both jobs, basically. He had been offered the video spot at Auburn and the op spot, but he couldn't take them both, right? It was going to be, the, the, whichever one he didn't take, they, people were telling me I was going to get the other spot. And so I'm feeling great. Like, we're excited. Like, hey, we got, we're going to have an opportunity here to be at one of two great locations, we're starting to research how Jess could get a job in Chattanooga or Auburn or whatever, because neither job was hardly going to pay much, but it was a great position. And, um, and so I hadn't heard anything for a while. And it's like, I was getting these updates and it had been like a, you know, a few days, maybe a week. And I'm like, what's going on here. And so uh, I finally got a call um, and both things fell through. 
And it was like uh, uh, the one guy took one of the jobs and then uh, Coach Lebo immediately hired a, a guy that had been on his staff already as a manager and made perfect sense. And so it was like, you know, boom, all of a sudden I didn't have either spot. And I actually just remember like sitting down under this pine tree outside of our offices at Pensacola, like, oh, it was like just a, you know, kick to the gut. And like, you know, you feel like you just got, again, just punched in the stomach, you know, and, and you don't know what you're going to do. And uh, so, so that kind of happened. And that was, you know, something you, you go through, you went through. And, but then eventually um, Rick Scruggs from Gardner Webb had come down to recruit some of our players at Pensacola. And I had just sat beside him the whole time. He was the head coach at Gardner Webb and we had a great conversation and uh, we were just talking about life and he's asking me about our players and he was just a kind of a really funny guy and engaging guy. And, you know, we just uh, had a good conversation sitting there watching our open gym and uh, Chris Holtman, uh, the head, who's now the head coach at Ohio state. He, he was uh, the top assistant on coach Scruggs, staff coach Holtman had been down to recruit our players. So, you know, I'd spent a little bit of time with him and we had this really good player named Tim Jennings. And, um, and Tim Jennings, you know, for, w w was going to be uh, what we didn't necessarily know at the time, but I think Chris Holtman and, and Rick Scruggs knew a potential like program changing guy uh, for Gardner Webb. And, um, and so they were recruiting Tim Jennings. They were recruiting another uh, player on our team uh, named Zorn Jelinek and um, post player from, from um, Serbia. And, uh, and so while they're, you know, I'm just talking, getting to know those guys a little bit because they're recruiting our players. And then a, a friend of mine who's now on our staff guy, I went to high school named Jeremy Luther. He was the assistant coach at Mercer and he worked for Mark Sloniker at Mercer and coach Sloniker and coach Scruggs were, were very good friends. And um, he actually told me, cause he was just asking, they were recruiting some of our guys too. And I said, yeah, Gardner Webb was down here. Um, you know, I met coach Scruggs and he said, well, you know, Scruggs and, and Slon are like really good friends. And he said, uh, he said, and he said, they got a spot open on their staff right now. They got an assistant spot open. Um, he knew I was trying to find a job. Um, and this is Jeremy Luther, who again was an assistant at Mercer. And he said, and, and I said, really? And he, and he said, yeah, you should just call him and ask him, you know, if, if he can interview or whatever. And so I did, I called coach Scruggs and I said, Hey, I heard you guys had an assistant position on your staff. I'd love to be considered. And uh, so one thing led to another, he just, it just happened. He, he didn't like have somebody in mind. He had already, they had already interviewed a couple people. They, they didn't feel great about, I guess uh, the candidates. And so they brought me up to interview. And, um, you know, part of this whole thing is, Hey, you know, they also have Tim Jennings at Pensacola. And so, you know, you hear about like guys hiring people to get a player and right. that's not really how it all happened. Cause coach Scruggs was like really clear about like, Hey, this doesn't have anything to do with the guys we're recruiting. You know, this is all about like, Hey, we're trying to find the, the best fit for our staff. And, um, and, and he really like kind of separated those two things and, and was like telling me like, you're not getting this job just, you know, for us to get Tim Jennings. And that was really clear. And I think coach Holtman was a little bit different. Coach Holtman was a little bit like, kind of like, Hey, if you get hired or, or like, we going to be able to get Tim. <laughs> like, like he was a little more, uh, and I said, look, I don't, and I, and I tried to the whole time say, look, I don't, I don't know. I said, I think we got a pretty good relationship. Um, they didn't really have any chance to get him otherwise, because he was, it was like Louisiana tech, Weber state, like Utah state, some higher level programs. And um, so in the end of the day, I get the job. And, and, and again, and when coach offered me the job too, he, he said, he said again, he said, Hey, look, again, this has, if like we don't sign your guys at Gardner Wet or at Pensacola, that has that, you know, that's fine. That's fine. Like it's fine. Like we hired you to do the job here and and those two things are not connected. But then it's like, hey, now go ahead and start recruiting those guys. <laughs> uh so that so I got hired at Gardner Webb. It was an unbelievable opportunity. You know, you know, the jobs that I didn't get 
in terms of going to Chattanooga as the ops guy, uh, Auburn as the video guy, all of a sudden I'm coming to Gardner Webb and I'm a full time assistant coach, um, w- which was, you know, more than I could have ever hoped for or dreamed of. And so, you know, the Lord opened those doors for me, you know, shut other ones and open these uh, so that I could be here and be around Chris Holtman and be around Mike Netty and be around Rick Scruggs and our athletic director, Chuck Birch here at Gardner Webb. Um, and Tim Jennings came and played for us and Zorn Yelenit came and played for us. And we actually won a conference championship here uh, in the Atlantic Sun. Um, and those guys were big, big, big parts of that. And we had other really good players. Um, and then, you know, the, the relationship with John Schulman and the relationship with John Searby, um, you know, paid off for me later down the road. It's when Auburn, John Searby left to go to uh, Bradley as the associate AD and left Auburn. Uh, you know, he and Coach Schulman recommended me to Coach Lebo. And again, I didn't know Coach Lebo real well, but I knew those other two guys really well, and, and he leaned on them. And um, again, I was I was you know blessed to be hired by Coach Lebo and have a chance to go work for him at Auburn. You know, three years after being here at Gardner Webb. Three years at Gardner Webb, three years with Lebo at Auburn, three years with Lebo at East Carolina, and then July fifteenth, twenty thirteen. You're right in the middle of. July recruiting time, getting ready for the next year. Uh, and your old buddy, Chris Holtman, uh, leaves Gardner Webb to take a job uh, at Butler. Um, somebody at Gardner Webb reach out to you, or do you get real aggressive thinking maybe this is, this is my shot? It was a little of both. It was a little of both. Um, I mean, it was both. Um, you know, Chuck, Chuck Birch had a short list of, of people that he had been around and, 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 you know, Gardner Webb's a place where you need a, the right fit, um, especially from a spiritual perspective and a faith perspective, because we're a Christian school and, and he knew where I stood in terms of my faith and, and how I was going to do the job. Uh, so he had a short list of candidates, uh, a, a really good list of candidates, but all, all the guys were, were guys that had worked at Gardner, Gardner Webb and spent time here. And so he knew very well. And um, so it was both. I mean, I I was aggressively reaching out to him and he was reaching out to me that, Hey, you know, you're one of the guys we want to look at and strongly consider. When you get the call that it's, it's yours. What's that moment like for you? Um, Just exciting, you know, really exciting. Um, You know, had no idea if I'd get the job or not because the other, um, the other three candidates that interviewed would have all been, they've all been really successful since not getting the job at the places they've been. And they were all really successful before. Um, so, you know, I was, uh, it, it, I, I, I came to interview, it was during July recruiting. So I, I, I have, I have my suit and, and tie and everything to interview. So I interviewed here uh, during the, the dead period between recruiting periods um, I got all my East Carolina gear packed in my suitcase. So I left here and flew right out of Charlotte because Charlotte's close to go to, um, to, to Orlando to recruit. So I'm on the road recruiting, you know, for East Carolina, you know, certainly looking at guys in case I get the Gardner Webb job too. Um, and you're, you're on the road and you're expecting a call, you know, any day. And, um, I got the call while I'm there in Orlando um, and, you know, just uh, from, from, from Chuck Birch and, um, you know, just super excited. And I was in the uh, hotel, just in my room pacing around and, um, you know, called my wife and we were fired up and I went down to the hotel uh, restaurant and ordered a big steak, which I don't typically do, but to celebrate and just give thanks to, to, for this opportunity. And, and then, um, you know, then the next day I'm like going back to the gym and, um, you know, I, 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 I'm trying to figure out what to wear just to the gym where I basically just got like normal clothes on. Cause I'm, you know, more watching players for, for Gardner Webb <laughs> right. and then flew back into Charlotte, you know, had a round trip ticket into Charlotte. So flew back into Charlotte and, and drove from Charlotte airport back to Gardner Webb. Um, and then we had the press conference 
So I had the same suit and tie and, and clothes that I wore for the interview to do the press conference here um, in Boiling Springs. So it was a whirlwind of about two weeks um, and really one week there where it got really crazy. Um, but but you know, a, a blessing and, and, and it's been a great journey. Last question let you get out of here. Um, what is your best piece of, of working advice to, to that 20 something that, that wants to get into the coaching game that, that one day wants to lead their own program. And, uh, it's a long journey, uh, no matter, no matter where you start generally before you get the keys to a program, but what's your best piece of advice to them? Well, I think we have to like, as coaches, um, follow some of the advice that we try to give our players, um, you know, both for, for, for work and life. Um, you know, and as we're coaching our players and we're building a team, you know, it's focusing on those values that you think are important for success. And everybody's got their core values. Uh, we call it here our bulldog DNA. Um, but, but, you know, and within that, as coaches, we're, we're trying to get our players to focus on the process of becoming a great player and becoming a, a great team. And we, we never know where that's going to end up, you know, for each team or for each player. Um, we, we, we never, like, you know, you talk about it's the journey, not the destination. And, you know, I think we got a chance to have a great team this year, but we don't know whether or not, you know, the ultimate goal is to go to the NCAA tournament and, and, and win, the, win the Big South and go to the NCAA tournament. But, you know, we don't know if we're going to be able to achieve that or not. Only one in, you know, 10 schools are going to do that. So can we just be about becoming the best that we can be every day? Can we just attack um, being the best team 94, you know, or, or you know, the best Gardner Webb basketball team that we can be? And, and that's just a daily process, right? It's a daily process of pouring in to our core values of, trying to work at it every day and, and getting lost in that process. And, and, you know, it's not about the result, right? You know, if you lose a game, you can't get caught up with that. If you win a game, you can't get caught up with that. It's about, Hey, how did we play? Uh, how did we prepare? How did we practice leading up into that game? What can we learn? What's, what's next? Um, and, and be, you know, I say what's next, but also just being present in the moment to try to do your best. And I, I think we have to live that way. You know, we can't always have our eyes on what the next job is. Uh, we can't have our eyes on, you know, kind of these end goals, but it's, but it's a focus on who, who we're becoming, who we're becoming, you know, for my, for, for me and my faith is trying to become more like Christ because that's what the Bible teaches us to do. So it's, who am I, who am I becoming as a Christian? Who am I becoming as a, as a leader, as a father, as a husband, as a basketball coach, as a, as a, um, you know, a, a colleague to my the guys on my staff and, and just getting lost in being better and, and, and doing the best you can do. And I think, you know, as a 20 something, like that's what you got to get focused on. Now you got to have, you got, you got to, you got to, you got to have a vision and you got to say, okay, how can I, uh, you know, how can I put myself in a position to, um, you know, become a college basketball coach or a high school basketball coach? Well, I've got to do X, Y, and Z. And then you got to go start to do those things and you got to build relationships and you got to network and you got to try to put yourself in positions that can help build relationships. But um, as you're doing that, it's just, hey, how can I do these things to the best of my ability? How can I be true and authentic to, to, uh, the relationship, the conversation, how can I prepare uh, in, in, to, to do my best and whatever my, my head coach has tasked me with, whether that's checking class, driving the bus, driving the van, uh, sweeping the floor, taping the floor, doing the laundry, um, getting the scouting report ready, evaluating the player, whatever that is, like just how can we continue to do that to the best of our ability? And, um, and then like, you know, things just kind of take care of themselves. Um, and then there's going to be a lot of adversity along the way. And um, you just got to keep pushing forward. I think we have to, as coaches and, and people, try to follow that advice that we give to our players. Uh, that's the only way I know how to do it. Um, but there is no magic bullet. There is no ultimate recipe to, to you know, climbing the coaching ladder. 
But if you don't do a good job where you're at and, and treat people the right way, um, you're not giving yourself a chance. I know that. 